What is up guys and welcome back to today's Destiny 2 build with today's build focusing on a classical but still very viable bottom tree solar build with the added effects of both defense and warmind cells. Now utilizing the odd but very great Kepri's horn and warmind cells of your choice we can create a build that will allow you to produce cells via your barricade with a insane cooldown rate and pretty much allow you to throw streams upon streams of firewall grenades at an all time high which in PvP could become very chaotic on certain maps. This build is an odd one at most as it does have a place in Destiny, but considering how you have to rely on exotic and how it generally works, may put some players off. But I won't lie, and not say that the build is fantastic for content where you need both protection and damage in one. This build will expand on that idea and how you can make this work in a number of ways. Starting off with the subclass, we will be using the Code of the Siege Breaker for the active boost of sunspots, which will naturally regenerate all of our abilities as we go along. The build will fully use our grenades to not only cause and shut down areas with a flaming warm, but also help with producing warm and cells as we go, via the Wrath of Rasputin mod. The exotic in use is only effective once per use, and then after that you'll simply have a barricade up which can be helpful in some situations, but most times useless against ultra level ogres for a prime example. Using the Sun Warrior and Soul Invictus, which are two of the main perks that will carry the build, can allow us to at least add a additional effects to said exotic via sunspots created throughout, which overall, we can use to buff and improve our ability region by times 2 than normal, and actually make Kepri's Horn actually more viable. Code of the Siege Breaker has always been the perfect setup for pairing with exotics that are already good in a all round type build, but can become even more better when paired with the subclass as long as it has some kind of connection that can enhance the gear even further. Along with the sunspots, we will also be using the Marty Retribution Grenade Launcher with Demolitionist to also boost grenade regen speed, but also, its effects are similar to firewall grenades but shorter, and can also activate warmind cells in the process. If this is starting to sound interesting then you're right, the build will allow you to produce 3 waves of firewalls via the 3 different sources and all sources will link straight back to Warman Cells for a chaotic finish, kind of like a fuse to a large detonation. Now for your grenades, we will be using the firewall grenades as they are the best for continuous damage and offer the most in retaining a good source for sunspots for quick ability boost and allow us to use our exotic a lot more often than normal, which is important in the long run of the build. Your weapons will need to at least be able to proc cells by design or through the use of the Warman Cells already equipped it. Prime weapons to look out for would be Xenophage, Mighty Retribution, Sunshot, or the Archelos plus Seraph weaponry. For my primary, I've opted into using the Seven Seraph hand cannon with multi kill clip and underdog, and just like last time, it's a very good hand cannon to use in PvE that I believe a number of people have slept on until now. The weapon is great for taking on red bar adds within a few hits, and as its recoil is non existent, makes landing precise shots a lot more easier compared to others. It also comes with a very large magazine size of 15, which company what my weapon has, which is very favourable in improving the weapon's reload speed as of company now, my reload speed is at 39, which isn't bad overall and allows me to have a healthy load ready for when my other weapons are out, but this eats into our perk multi kill clip that relies on fast reload speed to get the bonus going. Now there are two ways around this, we can either try and get a roll that has drop mag for the weapon for a plus 13 low speed or get the underdog or pulse monitor which both work in your favour as they both rely on you being near critical to activate their perk. Or when using the subclass we can go ahead and just make use of the damage buff we receive via the sun warrior which can also circumvent this issue but you'll still have the low reload speed to deal with. For secondary I'm using the Marty's retribution with field prep and demolitionist and this will become a common tool in achieving both quick grenade regen and the ability to shut down pathways just like the rest of our abilities. The Martis is a great weapon in main when pairing it with whatever solar or warmind mods you have in mind, and is a high recommendation to have at all times. Now of course as this weapon isn't commonly available again until whenever Bungie chooses to reintroduce it again, it may be a bit more harder to get as of now. But as the build is pretty flexible and strong in ability regen for creating a consistent rotation, you won't need to worry about having this weapon in the build at all. For heavy, I've chosen to use the Xenophase machine gun for the warmind cells proc ability and sheer damage it can produce against bosses, etc. 
I highly recommend you go Xenophage as it's a great piece of equipment that will serve you well for whatever content you have in mind. The ability to proc one cells sells thanks to the Wrath of Rasputin mod allows you another option of destructive capabilities for clearing all types of content out within a few shots. So while your secondary or primary may not be available at times, using the Gazina as backup can help a long way. If you don't have the Gazina then any other weaponry such as a heavy solar rocket launcher with splash damage can also work with the build. For the stats, your main focus should be the resilience area to boost the regen rate of your barricades as they tie into the exotic and then you're going to want to focus on grenades and then your intellect stat and so forth. As you're going to be using Kepri's a lot, it will be wise to spec into the resilience and aim for a moderate regen rate for a faster barricade cooldown of your liking. The sweet spot will be the 70 to 80 area cooldown, which should be enough for you to gain your barricade back after use of your first. You then have your grenades which will follow up after you use your barricade and I would recommend you aim for the 60 for a 51 second cooldown as any more than that would go to waste since you have a weapon with Demolition's perk, mods that enhance the discipline area further, and your sunspots will be actively improving regen anyways. Lastly, you have the intellect area, and this can be left at 50, simply because the build isn't focusing so heavily on the super, but rather the abilities per se. With the master of weapons and mods that can provide direct super energy, Going above 50 to me is wasteful as this can be reinforced into the Discipline or the Resilience stat instead which will affect the entirety of the build throughout its own usage. And next for the armor, the main affinity you're going to need is the Solar for the Warmind Cells and this should be fairly easy to attain if you have the Season Pass armor. After that, the majority of the mods being used will consist of grenade focused mods that feed back into your grenade regen stat so this is a good area to experiment how much Discipline you actually need overall. Exotics being used will be the Kepri's of course, and this will need to be Solar to slot in Warm and Cells mods and Ashes to Assets mods. Now, if you don't want to go ahead and have Solar and you want to have something else slotted in for the Warm and Cells aspect, by all means you can go ahead and do that, but I would recommend you stick with just Solar for this case. Now as we have covered the main gist of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. So starting off, we have Head that has Ashes to Assets and Burning Cells mod. Arm, we have Recovery, Unstoppable Hand Cannon, Fastball and Light of the Fire mod. Chest, we have Recovery, Cacus of Dampner Times 2 and Wrath of the Rasputin mod. Leg, we have Mind of Resilience mod, Absolution and Rage of the Warmind mod. Mark, we have Discipline, Distribution, Bomber and Global Reach mod. Now, out of all the solar builds to play with, this build here is the most unique you'll be able to get your hands on for the sheer fact of how easy and predictable the build pretty much is on the field. In its most basic form, using the Capri's horn will allow you to shoot out a firewall type ability every time you pop your barricade, which will go forward and backwards once and if it connects with a target then you have a chance of it procking a sunspot and also warm my cell in one, rinse and repeat. Now the basic form is useful for running in basic content that won't require a lot of thinking or heavy hitting moments. And to be honest, it's not bad for a beginning step into build crafting, as you can then customize and adapt it to certain changes within the environment. But using this high level content won't get you far at all, no matter how much you try to build into it. Now the new additional version we have builds on the current template, but adds more to it for a wider versatile set of countering harder content. Adding in the already powerful Warmind Cell mod can add a bit of flavor to the already spicy build, with each solar splash damage effect on our end, allowing us a chance to proc a cell with a magnificent explosion, which will most likely decimate entire areas with ease. So while using our exotic now, we can not only proc a sunspot for a boost in ability regen, but also proc a cell with combination of mods at our choosing. But it doesn't stop there, as we have our grenades as well that can cause continuous damage and cells, and our secondary, primary and heavy that can provide the same effect. We are basically filling in all options on our end to proc cells as much as you can, so we can clear content out one step at a time, and this is how it should be when maining the build. I think what will make the build popular for some is how you can choose how you want to proc yourselves and don't need to rely on a one with combo setup for end results. This in practice will allow players to engage best into what they want to build around better, rather than focus on one singular area, and if you don't have the gear then that shouldn't be a problem, as at the end of the day, the build can still work, although be limited in capacity if you don't have the Pacific Warmind cells. 
The only downside to using such a build is that Capri's, although functional in design, isn't really that great as an exotic to use in endgame nightfall or deals, as the damage you do from your exotic won't be high enough to make an impact. At the same time, although you're also given a faster back cooldown, most endgame enemies will shatter it within a few seconds, so this defense ability can only take you so far. This doesn't mean you can't use it in raids, nightfalls or gambit, but it does mean you have to play more cautious and use it best when you know you can pull it off. Overall, the build has a place depending on what content you choose to use it for, but mainly it has a place in low to mid level content that doesn't require a lot of dedication to focus on really tough ads. It still has issues to where it needs to rely on one mind cells to perfectly make it work at end game, and yet alone it can still put in the work, just not on end game level. I recommend new players to give this a try on the basic form and then build it up from there, and hopefully, you'll get a powerful build just like shown. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.